Howdy, y'all. It's your boy Nate. We're going outside. Not out, out, outside. I just need to be outside. I can't be holed up at home today. Just finished a bit of work, and this is the fit. We got this choco leather trench, this fun baby blue oversized daddy shirt, a scarf, and these uh, gray jeans. I don't know if it's all working together. I've got like, I also got a turtleneck underneath, but this is navy and then this is baby blue. So I'm not sure if it's working, but we're going out bringing the CDG PVC tote today because we are bringing the iPad, doing a bit of reading, a bit of writing, fun little passion project day and some reading too. We are reading Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melchor. And so far it's, oh my God, I know I'm gonna have a headache. There are no paragraph breaks. It's like, where do I stop? How do I stop? And you can't, the only ways you can stop is uh, if you literally just leave the sentence or you finish the chapter. I'm like a few pages in. More updates to come. And I think I need to do a hat today. The, the colors are like way too neutral underneath. So I think I might pop it off with like this green to sort of just even everything out. We'll see. I'll just put the cap in the bag for now. But y'all, let's go! Because it's literally gonna take an hour to get to this cafe. It just recently opened. It's in the outskirts of town, so we gotta go. Let's go. Hello, y'all. I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm in the little middle fucking nowhere. <laughs> there's like moving traffic to one side and it's just like, it's literally, look at this. It's like nothing. Dirt roads. Okay. Okay. It doesn't look like it, but I'll show you. Just wait. Okay. Look at this. Wild. I'm in the fucking boonies. The boonies. I'm trying to head to this cafe. It looks huge. Lots of retail space in middle of nowhere. Let's get to it. y'all it's your boy nate i read books because reading is sexy and if you're not reading you're not sexy if anyone needed to know this morning i filmed my 2k q a that's where we are timeline wise and i don't know why i do this to myself but we've got a week's worth of books to talk about we've got one two three four five books oh my god five books to talk about y'all okay here we go Okay, earlier this week, I finished Beautyland by Marie Helen Bertino, out by FSG January 16th. Look out for this one. It is a four-star read for me. It took me by surprise, truly, but it's about this alien girl named Adina who comes to Earth to report back to her homeland about the ongoings of Earth and life, and Adina explores queer girlhood, and a slew of other things as she becomes more and more human and less and less alien. She realizes how close to Earth she actually is. It's about grief. It's about girlhood. It's about 
ultimately life itself. It's this beautiful container of like what you imagine living on Earth to be if you are to create this time capsule or capsule of life itself and explain it to another being. If you know Earth ever ends and aliens find us, finds this like container of living, it actually took me by surprise. It's written in this like really gorgeous, strange language. So outside of human perception. And it's very odd. It feels very, a bit twee. 2008 indie feel, if you catch my drift. By the end, I was just kind of taken aback by how beautiful it is. I, I teared up, I'll say that. I'm trying to find a quote for you because there's some gorgeous writing in here. But there's this sort of speech that she has at the end, um, not to spoil anything. She has written this book about her experience on Earth as an alien to everyone on Earth. And this is what she says. If the assignment had been to be human, to fail, then I succeeded. But if it was to create a comprehensive document of life on Earth, I was always doomed. Language is pitiable when weighed against experience. My deepest loves and sadness fell outside the realm of articulation. Here's this alien that experiences human loss and she doesn't know what to do with it, much like the rest of us. I feel like grief is such a hard topic to tackle, however many times it happens to us. And it's so funny, odd, that like, well, you know, if you saw the All About Love video and also all the books that I read in 2023, Death Valley, Kaveh Akbar's Martyr, just how poignant all these books are about death. No matter how many books, there's always something to learn about grief, something new, something fresh, and it doesn't necessarily open the wound again, but it doesn't heal it either. It just makes me realize that it's there, no matter how faded, no matter how much the scabs have formed over, it's uh, it's always there. Yeah, as this like beautiful opening, less of a gash and more as a invitation to sit with sorrow, sit with death and exist with it, befriend it. Uh, if I've learned anything from Bell Hooks's book, but also Death Valley as well. And yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, it, it took me by surprise. It had this beautiful sweeping ending to it and I loved every bit of it and I loved this one to bits. It's an odd one and it's a, it's a major joy. After that, I, uh, yeah, so there's a series of ARCs that I wanted to get to because they're all coming out in January. And I don't know how, I don't know when this video will come out, but I guess all of these will be out by the time I talk about them. I read The Fetishist by Catherine Min. This is out by Putnam and Sons, January 9th. It's about Kyoko, who essentially avenges her mother's death and explores yellow fever. Why does the colonial white man continue to thirst over the Asian female body? And explores all the funny, hypocritical, and strange bits of what that is. Min's voice is strange, beautiful, and wonderful all at once. This is published posthumously. Sadly, it still feels like it's trapped within the third, fourth, or fifth draft. It, it's not quite done yet. I think it exists still in this place of anger and confusion. And I think by her daughter's work, Min's uh, daughter's work, she tried to the best of her ability to have this published in its finite form, but there, there's still little kinks that I think uh, should have been worked out. It feels a bit lazy in the end, given the chapter headers, but yeah, it deals with race, ideals of femininity, complicity, and visibility, and backed by Alexander Chi and Kathy Park Hong, who I both love and who I think sought out the publication of this, given Min's short stories. I'll leave a link to her short stories down below because they're actually quite fantastic. They're really tight, beautiful. There's always this uh, incredible tension in between her characters with such playful dialogue. It's very snappy and uh, there's this just fun game of ping pong between um, her characters that I really appreciate. I think she's a better short story writer than I think she is a novelist and it shows here. If uh, you are an Asian American girly and you are wondering why you, you like the white man or are wondering why the white man likes you, this, this is an interesting one.
the fetishist, Catherine Mint. And then did a buddy read of A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers with Yena from Modern Ajima. Love you, Yena. Was this part of my winter reading list and uh, I did it. I did it, y'all. It's about, it's a basically a female Hannibal Lecter and she looks back on her love and lust and lavish taste of these men. This was apparently a TikTok darling. I was really sold by the cover, to be honest. And I did it and it's, uh, it's bad, y'all. It's awful. This was really yucky. Feels way too debut-y. It's overwritten. And there's just, it's so, it's not even camp, y'all. It's just bad. It's bad. But what it does explore is, do you fully know yourself and understand your own actions? Do your actions sum up to who you are? That's all explored here through food, cannibalism, what it means to be a woman. But ultimately, it's just lackluster because it's repetitive. It's a bit dull. It just goes on for way too long, honestly. This could have been shaved by, I think, like, a hundred or so pages. But, like, to give you a sense of, like, how bad it is, here's a line. Love makes us do the wacky. It also can make us do the whacking. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Ah, uh, so rancid, the prose in itself. And I'm just like, ugh. But I would love to see this as a Hulu adaptation as like a mini series. That would be really, really fun. It would just be better as a mini series given the lavish details of food and the killings themselves. The killings in here written very dully. It was, it was like a hard three stars. It was somewhat entertaining and also because I have high hopes of this becoming an adaptation, a visual adaptation. Girls, we can do better. We can do better than this. Y'all disappointed me. Y'all disappointed me with this one. Ugh. Overhyped for what? Then I had an ARC of Green Dot by Madeline Gray. This is out by Henry Holt and Co. It is a debut. It is about Hera. Bye girl, bye representation, let's go. But she starts off liking girls and then falls in love with this married man. And uh, well, I'll leave it there. But this is, what did I write? I introed this as the epitome of new adult fiction if Gen Z feels Emily Henry is too millennial. I think that's pretty accurate if you ask me, but again, I just, okay, I'm gonna say it again. Where the heck are all the editors? There are no more editors. Like where is Raymond Carver's editor? You know, he needs to be coming in if he's still around or like from the dead and like correcting all of these books. Cause I'm just like, Oh my gosh, there are no more editors, y'all. I'm so mad. Plenty of agents, it seems, but no editors. I feel like for 2024 and 2025, there just has to be at least more than one editor looking at a piece of work because we are in a drought of editors. This has not been edited. And given that this is an ARC, sure, but it, it just isn't tight and tidy, y'all. Tight and tidy is what I want. Michael Cunningham's editor. We need whoever that is to be looking at all of these books that are coming out. Here's a line I'll give you. He's tense, but that makes sense. Oh my God. And sure this is like 70, 80 way through the novel. Has Grey earned her right to write that line? No, I do not think so, no. Overwritten, there's these moments of like flowery prose that just shouldn't be there and just bogs the novel down, honestly, and just comes off as amateurish. And I just feel bad, because I feel like as a debut novel, you're allowed that, sure, but like, then then you're just an amateur. Gray just comes off as that writer where you just wait until they're a better writer by their second or third novel. And yeah, that's, that's what it is. I'll read this fun bit though. There's a Virginia Woolf mention in the book goes like this. You know that scene in the waves where it's like time passes and then Wolf just skips ahead and everyone is like, wow, that is so radical, that crazy modernist. She really just went and did that. I like to use this opportunity to say that Wolf clearly never worked in an office as a comment moderator. Don't at me. I know there weren't like work rights for women then. There's some fun, funny bits in here. And um, I think it just captures the early 20 something ennui like on point. 
but it makes me think like, oh my God, how insufferable was I as like a 20 something year old? Man, was I really that insufferable? Am I just getting too old for this stuff? It's again, the epitome of new adult fiction. I think if you enjoy romance, this this will do something for you. If you enjoy like Emily Henry with a younger voice, you'll enjoy this. But other than that, I thought it was just mid, to be honest. It didn't have that like hardcore any or no-ness to it. Y'all feel? Y'all feel? But yes, what did I write? I wrote, girlies, if you're pining over a man after being a lesbian for too long, this one's for you. It, it just felt way too debut-y and amateurish for me, sadly. But promise, there's promise for Grey in maybe her second or third novel. Is that it? Okay, we have one more book to talk about. Sorry, y'all. Uh, my brain is like, oh, wow. And I haven't had any food since that cheese and chives croissant. It wasn't really a croissant. It was not flaky at all. It was okay. And then that blueberry tart, which was actually really good. A little too sweet, actually, for my taste. So the coffee paired well with it. Okay, will I talk about that story? I will, after this last book. I'm almost done with it, and I just want to finish it. Because, y'all, hurricane season, Fernanda Melchor. Oh my god. I, I think I already have my thoughts settled on it. But what it is, is a witch has died, and a village has found her corpse. Through that is just a slew of just wretched, wretched horror, hedonism, orgies, so much sex. It's disgusting. It's all prickly. I feel sick and I just want to, I just want to finish it. <laughs> Which I feel like is most of Melchor's work, given that I've only read Paradise, is that you're just trapped in this hellhole, this hellscape, and you are not let out until the book ends. And I'm, I'm almost out. But let me tell you, if, if you want the very experience of hell, dive right into this, because Melchor does not let you breathe. There's just this very incredible way that she's able to suck you into a world and just belt you, belt after belt of details. And she just drives you through these details, creating direction and narrative out of that. It's incredible the way that she does it. And major props to the translator, who I will note, Sophie Hughes, translated from the Spanish. Ah, oh, does such, I think, an incredible job. Brutal, absolutely brutal. And I will have more notes on this because I think it's doing something very special. I'll talk about that later. But yeah, I just want to finish this, y'all. I just want to finish it. I should have just finished it and then lent you my thoughts. I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. Right now, the brain is soup at the moment. And yeah, having read like three ARCs that are hard three stars. Oh no, sorry. That's just two. I just had two. Beauty Land was like a good four. Good four stars for me. That, that one was a bit touching. I loved that. Voice felt fresh enough for me to enjoy it. But yeah, Green Dot and The Fetishist were just uh, hard three stars, sadly. And Certain Hunger. That's not an ARC. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, y'all, writing day? Writing day was good. I'm working on this. I would call it a long short story done in 23 parts. Uh, I can give you the title. I think I'm going to title it A Christmas Story. And I'll leave it at that. But I'm very much myself in the narrator and how he's coming along to writing this thing that he has to work on. It's, it's interesting because at once it is me, but also everything that I want to be, but also not me at all. It isn't, it isn't me, but as I'm writing him, it is sadly me, but it's not, it really isn't because um, our life experiences are different and what he has, I don't have. So in essence, it's really much what is it? I go back. I say this all the time, and I no one has fact-checked me yet, but it goes back to that Flannery O'Connor or Joyce Carol Oates quote about what is the unfulfilled life or what is the unlived life. Our narrator here has not lived much, but is loved so much, and he doesn't realize that, and he doesn't know what to do with that. So those are sort of the questions that I'm dealing with within this story and what he's dealing with, and uh, how he'll come out of it, I don't know. And I don't want to know. Um, I think that's the beauty of it. I think, what is it, age-old question of like, write what you know? I think there's also room for write what you don't know, because it's within that gray area 
the, all the questions spurt out. And that's what writing is. Writing is seeking out answers to our questions, but also creating more questions. Writing isn't easy. There's this vulnerability to it where, yeah, you might see portions of me in the book, but it's also not me. My lived experiences have implied certain notions in the book, but also within that vulnerability, there's also more questions that spurt out and you don't have answers to those questions. Yeah, I will say working at that cafe was not fun because there's way too many people. A lot of the same kinds of people that rushed in looking for a seat and then roll their eyes when they see it that I'm just like sitting by myself. Very many curious eyes as to why a person is uh, sitting by themselves on a Saturday at a crowded cafe, if you will. I probably chose the wrong place, but I, I wanted to go to this place. Glad I did. And it's a one and done kind of thing. I'm glad. But if uh, a friend wants to go and has a car because, oh God, it took way too long to get there. It took way too long to get back. And that's why I'm just so antsy. Also because this too, I feel physically ill reading this. I just feel so jumbled by it and so shook. This book has shook me. I'm shook. I'm shook. Oh God. As the kids say. Do kids even say that anymore? Oh god, I feel old. Y'all, I'll let you know that Green Dot has made me feel so old. And I'm I'm not much older than Hera, our narrator in the book, because though she is quite young, it's about this girl who just like she wants love. That's all she wants. And everyone is allowed that. Yeah. Everyone is allowed that. How she finds it, when she has it, it's not what she expects it to be. She wants it to be so much more, but it isn't. Like, yeah, I'll give props to Grey for creating this, like, really insufferable 20-something-year-old girl who just wants love. Like, everyone needs that and loves that. But if anything, I think she creates a very, like, realistic adjacent experience. It doesn't add sort of the literary flair to that. And sometimes you don't have to. You know, sometimes what this feels like is like a low-budget independent film. Sometimes there isn't enough budget for it. What I think I'm trying to say is there isn't enough creative budget that Grey was using to really like flesh it out, really turn it. She just wants love and we all deserve it. But sometimes it's not there and you don't get it for a long time. You don't get to have it. And you wonder like, why, why, like when to. Anyway, you know, Green Dot wasn't bad. I think I was too harsh on my Goodreads review, but it's like, it's like good if you, if you need that. Like if you want like a romance story that's like goes horribly wrong and you want to like live with some kind of pining. Anyway, this is so messy. Y'all, I'm so sorry. This is so messy. So messy. And I can't speak today because I, I think I've spoken everything that I needed to spoke. <laughs> Doing that 2K Q&A, uh, I was just, I spent like two hours talking. I was just like, to myself, really. But to you, y'all. Anyway, this is so odd. I don't know. I'm just so fumbled by everything. I, should, I think I just need food. I think I'm gonna watch a movie and then eat. That's, that's all I want. Okay. Yeah, y'all, can you tell I'm losing it? Yeah, I just need food. I think that's it. Have I said everything that I needed to say? Anyway, the writing went well. I'm just about done with it. And I don't know where it will go, which is funny. And I think this one will be very easy to edit because it's quite short. Really, it's like a long short story and that's all it needs to be. With these sort of projects, I, I get scared sometimes when I finish them because uh, if I, if I, like take a break from it and like look after it. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should have included this. Maybe I should include that. And if you keep going on and on like that, you wonder like, is this what it was when I started with it? And it isn't ever exactly how it, it's supposed to go because it's, uh, it's like a child, if you will. And I think that's why most female writers get that question a lot. Like, is it for the work or for the baby? Like, which do you love more? Which is more important? And it sucks that like women have to deal with that because it's like, it's not, it really isn't. But the work is almost like a child because it changes. It changes as you change and it changes over time and it matures. But the thing is after so, so many drafts, the, the work itself isn't ever done. There, there's this sort of emotional distance that you have to take and uh, realizing that like you've put all the feelings, the necessary feelings that you've needed to put within that book. I think that's why it took so long to write Adolescence Leaves, because that did really take, it really shouldn't have, 
but it did. It took like five years, if anyone needed to know. Five years, because all the feelings that I needed to put in that book concluded after five years. And yeah, I feel good now after it. Like now it just feels like a, a, a time capsule, if you will, in terms of my feelings for that book and of that book. And it's, uh, it's all there, contained, very distant from it, matured from it. My writing now looks very different from what that was. Okay, I've said everything that I needed to say. I'm hoping this will be done maybe by the end of the year. Y'all, thanks for listening to me mumble about books. I feel like I've been a little too harsh and I feel bad because my August theme was to be less judgmental of characters. And I feel like really judgmental of these characters. I will say though, going back to Green Dot, because I feel bad. I feel like I was so rude about that book now that I'm thinking about it. Like I had fun. Like there were moments where I'm like, hey girl, no, why are you feeling that way? Girl, no, don't do that sort of thing. That, I mean, I think expresses sort of the joy that I was having with the book because uh, yeah, I grew with her. I watched her develop these feelings and it was fun. Okay, anyway, y'all, great to have you here. Great for listening to me. And uh, that's it, that's it. Uh, be well, do good work, keep in touch. Okay, bye.